the battery, the solar ute project, which battery and why. So, the question is, which chemistry, which cell? Well, in the great art of procrastination, we studied the question of which cells for most of 2020. The low price of the Gen 1 leaf cells from the US was beguiling. The price was tantalizing, but we were hearing the reality checks from purchases of the 60% cells. The 60% was perhaps closer to 50% of original capacity. So what was the life expectancy? To the rational engineer, not that good. Then the cheap supply ran out. That sorted that out. First I want to say, the lithium-ion cell that almost every appliance uses, from phones to Tesla cars, have lithium-cobalt chemistries, of some sort. The mixtures vary greatly, but I'm calling them all LCO or lithium-ion cells. So, looking at this graphic, I've arranged them to show relative energy densities. LCO cells are the clear winner. LTO cells are quite low by comparison. If I am building an EV that needs a 500 km range, LCO would be a very strong choice. So do we race out and get LCO cells? Let's see. C rate. This is the maximum discharge or charge current specified for a given amp hour of a battery cell. So, if a cell had a capacity of 10 amp hours and its C rate is 3, the maximum recommended discharge current would be 30 amps. C rates can be specified separately for charge and discharge rates. From the C rate we can determine the maximum charge time for fast charges. The 10 amp hour cell can be charged at 30 amps will give you 10 divided by 30, one third of an hour, so 20 minutes. It's not quite that simple but it's a good guide. Most cell chemistries have a higher discharge C rate to the charge rate but EV companies have been tweaking their chemistry and construction to get the C rate higher and charge C rate equal. For most LCO cells the C rate is roughly 2 to 1, discharge to charge. For the cheap LFP cells, the discharge C rate is much lower, maybe 1 C, and the charge rate 1 quarter C of rated amp hour. The big winner, is the LTO cell. Usually specify a discharge rate of 10 C and a charge rate of 5 C for short durations these could be doubled. The plot thickens. The Chinese LFP cells are clearly the cheapest. The big EV OEMs might manage to build their LCO cells close to the cost of LFP. But, most of the Chinese OEM are going LFP and so is Tesla in their cheaper models. LTO is the most expensive, I guess, titanium isn't cheap. Cycle life is very important. Ask any Nissan Leaf owner. It directly impacts on the cost of ownership. On paper, LFP cells will outlast a LCO cell by 5 times plus. But, in an EV environment, LFP cells have not handled the high demand placed upon them. The LTO cells are exceptional for cycle life. Easily 10 times that of a LCO. The LTO cells are starting look cheaper, aren't they? Well the LTO just keeps looking better. LFP and LCO cells don't like working under 0C and they don't like it too warm either. They'd prefer under 35 degrees Celsius. LTO cells can operate down to minus 30 degrees Celsius and up to 55 degrees Celsius. Again, a clear winner. Full discharge. What I really mean here is to discharge to zero volts. If you discharge a LFP or LCO cell to zero volts, you are very likely to fatally damage the cell. Well, LTO cells aren't bothered by this at all. I wouldn't make a habit of it though. So, if you in your EV conversion and you're running on fumes, the charge station is so close. Do you risk it? With LTO cells you aren't risking anything but a tow truck should you fall short. LTO, tick. Overcharging will damage most batteries. Even lead acid will be damaged eventually. This graphic indicates the safety from consequence of overcharging. With LCO cell, bad things will happen. Fire. Explosion. LFP cells aren't so bad. They normally deform, smolder and such. LTO cells will boil but but not cause fire or deform. All cells will be fatally damaged. LTO still fare the best. All over safety. Aside from previously covered there are other risks. Mechanical damage and external ignition. LCO performs badly to both. Again. Fire. Explosion. LFP is not so bad. Lots of smoke and heat but hopefully not fire. 
LTO, mechanical damage barely does anything except damage the cell. Fire. No more dangerous than a stick of wood. Which would you rather on the wall of your house? To select a cell chemistry. If I needed to maximize distance, then LCO is the only choice. While the OEMs are moving towards LFP, they have the benefit of customizing the chemistry to achieve their goal. I don't believe the cheap LFP cells have the C rating or ruggedness to withstand the rigors of an EV conversion. They are ideal for residential power walls. Low cost, fairly safe. I've used LFP cells for nearly 10 years on our off-grid property, very good. One other factor I haven't mentioned is that while LFP cells have better cycle life than the LCO, they suffer from calendar life degradation, coupled with elevated temperature, like Queensland's summer, can accelerate degradation. I believe the same applies to LCO cells. LTO cells, I believe are a superior choice if you are converting a classic and aren't bothered by range. They should last a very long time. I also believe that LTO would be a good choice for domestic power walls. Not only are they the safest by a long way, they will outlast the other chemistries. I selected LTO cells for the solar ute project because of all these reasons. One of the aims for the solar ute is for long life. And to do so with low maintenance cost. We need it to perform well in the Queensland heat. And without a cooling system. And we want them to last 20 years. 300 cells. 300 kilograms. 23 kilowatt hours. These 30 amp hour cells actually average 32.8 amp hours. We parallel into pairs so we end up with 150 cell pairs. I didn't just pair them up randomly. By matching them up we went from a 10% variance to about 2% variance. I'll do a video on how I did this. Well, that's your bloomin' lot. Please subscribe, thumbs up, and click the bell. Thanks.